down with you know the the limitations of not just the bands but also that global azir band too i'm trying to get the right rookie i mean again and take deal here for the nip midliner but tonight there's the twist of fate can be flexed around i'm just gonna kind of look around to see what that possibility could be is we get the shan g top lane renekton instead of the time being this is quite early on though jamata so bin has an option to counter punch here i just wonder if he really wants to or if he's just going to isolate himself in the Cassante matchup. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Also, I feel like BLG as a team would probably like to really lock in their duo, uh, duo bot lane as well. I think they can probably be quite confident that Shin will have a deep enough champion pool to survive two more bans, especially considering that it's only Vi that's been banned away. And it seems like that'll be the case. Elk and On. I mean, they can also go towards Milio as well if they want between the Lucian combos. It's really up to them what they'll go milio and army it kind of just sort of facilitates the same thing it's just that to me i feel like milio offers a little bit of a higher scaling ceiling whereas nami is a lot more about that mid-game punch and it seems that blg want that mid-game punch a little bit more than the scaling so nip i feel like you have to go an ad here otherwise you just kind of suffer on photix part and the question is with varus and Callista both nerfed what do you really look to lean on here because if you go something super early game like a smolder which is still up or available or even a senna you are gonna get bullied to high hell in the bottom lane so do you just try and match it like one to one go something like draven or do you just ignore it entirely maybe you look for a jungler you do okay it will be the jacks so go ahead i, just, I love that help really like, some of these top like top teams it's not like you they ignore smolder smolder completely wide open what does NIP and BLG do? Say nah. Play Lucian and Nami instead. The East Connect play Lucian and Nami is the open on. <laughs> and then we get the back coming through for Aki, most likely. And we get a very close up NIP as well. You're going to love it. Again, the drafts are just a, a different base. Yeah, they really are. BLG now, I think you just really pinch on anything that Photic could potentially uh, stand up to uh, Elk and on with. But. <sighs> After these two bans, I really do worry for NIP's bot lane as a whole. And I feel like NIP are really going to have to lean on trying to play through this top lane. But they're going to be in a counter matchup, no doubt, with Renekton uh, into bin. Yeah, it's a real uphill battle. Let's see what NIP bans second here. Because Nocturne was uh, the first ban, ban here into Shun. I mean, honestly, they can kind of go anything. Viego would maybe be a nice shout out. Even though Shun's not played it too much. Uh, it's definitely something that pairs up really well with Ari. But they go towards the Lee Sin see where Shun decides to go in the jungle but for now BLG they banned away the Lulu uh, so maybe we're concerned about a potential Zeri Lulu or uh, maybe something like a Zeri Kaisa or sorry a Lulu Kaisa I beg your pardon BLG I mean I just feel like they're in such a strong position at the minute I have temporarily lost Jake if you're wondering why I'm yeah I am so refreshing it's the my stream <laughs> yes. how is it uh, now does the microphone away. sound better I think I'm not sure if you guys can hear Jake. <laughs> if you can, that's hilarious. Uh, as Senna is the eventual lock in, and of course, Karma is still being flexed. So uh, let's see where NIP go. I've got the green flag where or not Jake's actually back. I also don't have the reduction chat. I hope you're here. Uh, here, here, go. Here, go. Here, go. Here, go. Here, go. Here, go. Okay. I'll keep talking. Don't worry. Uh, Shun now. Uh, has this jungle pick to go towards and also bin of course still has that counter matchup uh it seems like he'll be getting the aatrox and sejuani paired up i mean hey it just kind of rounds out this blg composition to have uh a way of engaging a way of chain tcing volibear also kind of does something similar Charvin's also kind of a bit of a monster pick because i feel like no matter what nip are gonna have so many immobile champions on the bottom side that can get engaged on then be very quickly followed up on by ari by aatrox but they do land on the sejuani in the end and of course, just flexibility to play to both sides. Such a strong I skirmisher. Is working. And NIP. I mean, if they have to land on Tom Kench of all supports here, whilst you're certainly going to survive the lane, I just feel like NIP are going to have not that much damage to work with. So I'm worried for NIP out of the gate yeah. in terms of how well they can actually try and stand up to, especially the mid game power that this BLG draft does bring. I believe I am working. Okay, I, so. I believe I am working. Uh, and I just Welcome got a message back. from Dagda. Dagda's like, you are on stream. I know, Dagda, I work up at 6 a.m. LPL, <laughs> I know I'm here, okay? I'm not that crazy for human beings. So, 
I don't know what happened to the mic. I think you know, maybe I was getting BDOS or something, Jamada. You were you solo mm. casting, so you just take it away. Is Agna for like casual? He's <laughs> pick up Agna. Yeah, brother. So here we are. Here we are. Mm. And, and now that I'm back, you know, all I remember you saying is that this is going to be a good game. You might not have said that, but at the end of the day, even though I think that I'm putting off the best in arm in the world, yeah, I said that. And then Elkin on, one of the best Christian armies in the world as well. Now, I say one of the best, because why would I say the best? I don't think to really determine that in the season. I think that's just rubbish. But I can say one of the best because, holy moly, it's crazy when you get to see these guys out the international so, I agree. Oh. On your own. Okay, let's go. I mean, look, I've been waiting. I Throughout the entire year of 2023, I never got an opportunity to be a solo color caster on the LPL. I, nev I was never cursed enough. Now, as a guest returning in 2024 for BLG's final series of spring regular split, to potentially match out their record. I'm by myself. Who would have guessed it? But we're here on the rift for NIP versus BLG as the Jayos hopefully do ring loud. Mixed responses of the Jayos. It's weird. I feel like we might, have, we might have got a cutout of the NIP ones. We barely caught the back end. Well, we did get BLGs. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't want to, Jake. I don't want to talk to you. I don't know if you're back, but you, you also know, need to speak so we can get clarification. I, of I, I, no, world. no, because the thing is, is in Discord it ain't doing it. So there's obviously something going on with myself and the stream uh, having some kind of audio issue. So I don't know. Apparently, mm. I sound like I'm drowning. Dagda offered his place, but by the time I get there, Dagda, I think this might end. <laughs> you know. So. Well. You know, look. Let's pretend I'm back, okay? I, because I'm pretty sure I'm All back. Right. I'm just gauging from the audience at this point. Thank you to everyone who sent me well wishes in the chat. It's Shanji 1v2s, and hopefully, hopefully we get to see Barney's up in the top side as we kind of expect when Aki picks up Jax. Shanji on the Renekton. All right. A little bit of information gained there. And we'll see exactly how NIP decide to use it in the previous game. W, even though they lost the series, just seeing that the jungler started on the top side, they were able to really snowball their Renekton previously. And Aki, he's pathing away from Photika's duo. Right, yeah. duo. He knows what's probably going to be going down here on the bottom side, uh, with Shun present or not. Uh, and I don't blame him for wanting to try and get some positive trades down on the top side. That tower shot was really hidden underneath those particle effects, but Tricky does take one. Does get the worst end of that trade for now, but. That mid lane matchup is really just going to be about pushing back and forth, trying to get first move, supplementing your junglers and skirmishes. Nothing more, nothing less. Should just be go as style. Elk. Uh, draw goes a bit forward. Elk doesn't commit forward either, though. Maybe Draw could have been a kill, but he had flash available still. Didn't want to stay in the trade alongside Photic, but Draw gets quite low there, uh, looking for a dive in, looking for an engage in this 2v2. So, again, Elkin on. I mean, I'm expected to have a high-class lane out of these two because this is such a good Lucian Nami lane. And I um, I noticed as well, having Shun as well, the gank potential bot feels endless. Yeah, of course it does. Whilst the Sejuani doesn't necessarily have a melee champion to work with, right, uh, to stack up that permafrost really, really quickly, just the, the upfront burst damage that Elkin on have between this Nami Lucian combo uh, will still be enough uh, with the added little bit of CC that Shun can provide as mm -hmm. Shun is actually beelining it back up towards the top scuttle by the looks of things. So he's Yo. trying to deny Aki a scuttle crab. He doesn't have Pryo up there though, so he does need to be careful. It looks like because Aki is so much slower than him, he might be okay. It depends on where the scuttle actually is right now in the river. Running towards him, I guess. up towards Aki, so he sure. be fine. Well, he's also in position if anything happens topside, but I mean, Bin is just being real calm there. That charm, that could have been a disaster for Rookie, but he was only just out of range. It shouldn't cross the river and now looks at bottom side scuttle. And it's been a pretty swell early game, being pretty chill throughout the lanes. The only thing really is what can happen through bot is 
again with Tom Kench. The answer is usually not too much as Elkanon take an unbeneficial trade, but they got healing up Jamada. It doesn't matter too much as well, it's Aki just continuing the invade on the stop side. Yeah, this is really cheeky. I wonder if he's going to have time to get the wolves as well because Shun's resetting now, but the wolf camp will respawn in about 15 seconds. So the thing about the jungle right now is there's two very frustrating facts when you play the jungle role. Mm -hmm. One, catch up a key XP is bloody broken. It's uh, silly still. And two, second respawn camps are so valuable to snowballing Ooh. an individual lead. Oh! If that's your oh! Shanji flashed the dunk oh! now flashes back ah! as well. Shanji's ah! gonna be pulled back in. That's nuts! <laughs> and here comes Aki to fly through. Dude, top lane is a flexing, and then Aki just oh. comes in to say hello. Uh, it's jungle diff in the top side. Uh, he cleans up, but how funny was that? They were both kind of just fighting for their lives uh, in the middle of that wave. And uh, thankfully, because Aki stayed around for the, the jungle uh, invade, thank you, pardon, he's able to clean up. So feels good for Shaji, feels good for Aki, who gets the kill credit. And uh, Bin is going to be returning to that lane with far fewer stats in comparison to Shaji showing up with that pickaxe and boots. I've always wanted to try the, the Korean style of casting. I don't know if this is the series to do it. Probably not. Probably needed uh, to do it last I, series. We should have done it last year. Look, maybe, maybe should, if it gets chaotic. Get, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm down. But flash. If it's crazy like yeah. this, right? If it's if there's moments like this of just individual skill being tested, yeah. we'll we'll find a spot. Don't worry. Okay. Right? We'll we'll get one. But uh, for now, Western casting, I guess, for Ooh. better or worse. Uh, NIP. Is this a dragon timer? Looks like the answer is yes, as I focus back in. We focus back in. Everyone is shoved in on the side of BLG. So this will just be an easy takedown. Of course, that was three grabs picked up on the opposite side by BLG. So uh, things are evening out. This is a really big wave. And Bin is taking his time about stacking it, but shouldn't electing not to look for a dive. And Shanji actually just hit six and is full Dude. HP. He's got so much CS. Actually, Shanji's going to be ahead by like, what, 10? 510 at least as bin yep, gets that massive push in yeah so good start to the lane. what happened top okay so we award the award awesome cheers <laughs> Thank you very much Ooh. aki again stealing away a camp there how much are we dancing okay dominant's gonna be used bin could be in trouble world and it gives some movement speed but I I, th no. I think he can slice no. and dice this and get W. Depends on Bin e ing over the wall, but can be matched. Yeah. Sean J. Never mind. Oh. I love this matchup because, like, one top laner pops R, and then the other top laner pops R and she runs away. True. Photo. Chillin'. Heal was burned, though, so they at least secure some of the spell out of that. But I always feel like Renekton will pop R. Feel like he's gonna win the trade, but then he forgets that the World Ender just gives a whole bunch of movement speed, so you just end up walking out. True. No, no real contest. And it happens both ways as well. Like, Dominus obviously gives you HP, so you can often survive getting run down by Aatrox. Very whatever matchup, unless jungle is getting involved, there's a low, low. Cleanse blown. Another summoner spells traded back and forth. We're going to be real slow in this early game, aren't we? You're going to continue just seeing small trades as Rookie moves the top side. I said that, but with the massive oversized wave, Bin now without World Ender, he's just going to get engaged by a Rookie. They run up, Bin gets a stun up, but Shanji uh -oh. under turret. No, he buffed it. He failed it. Rookie's coming in. He's going to get dunked down, and he's like, bro, what just happened? Good nuking damage, but Knight's now flown up as well, and he's got all the tools he needs. All the deception kite away from us. Rookie tried to flash and get Bin. That's a worthy attempt, but now caught in the middle here. Foxfire makes it a done deal, and the charm nicely connects. BLG punished so hard, and that Shanji dive hurts to watch. I can say stuff like this now because I'm a guest. What has my goat just done, bro? Rookie, rookie, rookie. I mean, it's not really his fault. He didn't actually have Mantra on that dive, as you'll see as we come into the replay and look at it. So there's just that little bit of extra burst damage missing off this Mantra Q, right? It's not quite as high. Yeah. Potentially would have just been rude in place. And I mean, to be fair, he dropped below 100. Would it have been enough? It's hard to say, but either way, Bin out plays the 2v1 dive. Knight's here to very happily clean up. Bricky tries to find the cheeky flash backwards. Oh, good reactions from Bin. I think Bricky just made his flash a little bit too telegraphed as he started to path back and then flashed. Just for that brief second, it gives Bin all the insight he needs. He sidesteps that one easily. Knight picks up a kill for free. Bin picks up a kill for free.
Oh, yeah. Now all of a sudden these solo laners feel a lot more stable inside of these matchups. Oh, they do indeed. I mean, for BLG, this is a great start to the game when that Aatrox top was getting pushed in. Bit of a CS lead building for Shanji. You know, Rookie making that move up as well means that Knight was able to follow and get his own kill, as you mentioned. So mid being matched, an even better story. And bot was already going well. Like, NIP, sure, probably have the gold out of that bottom side thanks to the center passive, but uh, things are still going good as Bin mm -hmm. went through a ward to get into this brush. So it is going to be a yeah. 2v2 top side. Being matched by NIP is well done for Dominus yet ones. again as Arki is fighting on the side. You're right, it's not even evolving into a 2v2. It is BLG looking like they're losing the 1v1s in each side. Shanji survives, but Force has been off the wave. And Arki just gets a solo kill with Wookie and Fodic hovering up now towards the, the, the grubs. Like, NIP taking them apart. Yeah, NIP cheating though. They had Fotix ultimate from downtown. It helped him both 1v1s actually. It hit both Bin uh, and Shun from the opposite side of the map. Helping out Aki and Shanji respectively. Really, really well played. And the Grubs. He wants it. He wants that minion. To NIP. Oh, regret. Oh. Regret. Charm connects as well. No dominance. You just saw him use it. Dunk down for Bin. BLG are just as quick to punish even after NIP find favor. Exactly. Feels good for them. Nice little pick on the back end. NIP. A couple of crumbly plays, but still, the game state's okay. And for BLG, I feel like they're yet to hit their mid-game spike, right? So we're really going to be dictating and judging BLG on once these first items come in and how well they actually use the power of their champions as this replay. Pretty damn funny. I mean, Shun and Aki just, like, duking out in the river. Bin and Shanji just having their, like, you know, their straight-up Gundam fight in the top side. As, uh, unfortunately, Shun cannot get away from Counter-Strike. Knight, not quite in time to save his jungler, unfortunately. Or Shun. He come out of that replay. And I think only two grubs picked up NIP. They weren't able to secure the third. So that's still on offer if BLG can find the time or NIP can find the time. Mm -hmm. make four, still but... one grub. Once you're not at five or six, a lot of teams just kind of say, yeah, not worth it. And they'll leave true. The wayside. Very, very true. Not worth it as uh, Elk. Might be caught out here, actually. Tongue Lash out of range. Elk still getting slowed down. Photic good damage. Tidal Wave to disengage. On was scared, just in case. As the 3v2 continues to the bottom side with the wave getting pushed out. Thanks to Arki's help. Maybe giving them the rotation towards this dragon that's been sitting up and waiting. NIP already picked up the first one. And with this wave crashing in as well, with what looks like mid-teleporting in now from Rookie, NIP have their eyes set on the prize. Yeah, this feels really, really good for NIP. Being able to secure this one. Mike's going to get a bit of a trade here. Oh, yeah. Off his health. Still yeah. not that bad. And if you get the second dragon. And it feels, I wouldn't necessarily say like against the run of play of this particular game. But if you if you looked at this draft coming into it, you would have probably thought, well, BLG, Lucian, Nami, likely going to be stacking dragons early on. Infernal Soul is what's on offer. Yep. Soul, Infernal Rift. Let's we'll see if NIP can keep that dragon pressure high. They continue to make BLG second guess themselves around some of these objectives, especially later on in the game. If NIP secure that third dragon, then if BLG don't have a particularly large gold lead to really dictate the tempo of this game, they're always going to be second guessing. Can we contest this objective or are we going to lose Soul? Will we lose Baron? That kind of decision making could be up on the table for them. Think about the range that they, they have to play against on the side of BLG if the game goes on, right? You talk about dragon stacking and like... Photic as well, naturally with the scaling, the time catch being a nuisance, the karma speed ups, the heals, like, or shielding, excuse me. How annoying this center will be for a composition that doesn't have a dedicated tank outside of the Sejuani. So the NIP getting bot ahead or maybe just getting some more pressure down here to give freedom to Photic and draw seems to be the next priority. Is culling into Dwarf does a bit of damage, but it ain't enough to finish the job, especially. Uh, with how the Tom Kench already has a bit of stats behind him. has been now ulti once uh -oh. again. That one went a bit wide. Shanji flashes back into it, trying to kite around at 1v2. Now all of a sudden, Slice and Dice is there, but Bin just kites it out. And I feel like Shanji now with nothing available just has to sit there and take it. Oh. Their ulti though and they oh. heal. Proves me. Oh. He jumps back in, tries to outplay and props to Fotic. That was doable at one point, but BLG kite around it and they still find the miracle. Oh, the next rotation of Eclipse coming up, plus the Photic ultimate, so, so crucial. Had it maybe hit Bin, and had Shanji maybe weave them one more auto attack, or just managed to land the spell somewhere, Bin could have very easily dropped, and Shanji could have found himself running out of a 1v2. But BLG, they find their mark, they find their man. 
not going to result though yeah. because it takes so long in setting up for Herald on. So Shibi. Not going to get picked off. Man, how good would it be if you just throw your tongue out and there it is, sashimi for free. Perfect day. Honestly, I'm a bit hungry, Jamata. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just mm. going to start this one off by saying I suddenly feel like raw fish, hey. Dude, there are so many good sushi places back in Australia. I don't know in Berlin yet, I'm going to be honest. I've had like one good Japanese place. I'm a little bit sus because the food quality I have noticed in supermarkets <laughs> is not very good. And so I'm like, man, am I going to go and try out uh, raw fish in a city I don't trust the food of? You know what I mean? Are, 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 you, are you not enjoying the Berlin food quality so far? Old oh, Knight is probably... Is he yeah, dead? He's fine. No, he's, he's good. He's flashing away. He's playing Ari. You're not, you're not enjoying the transition over to Berlin with food so far? It's not The, the not food, like going out for food is okay, but dude, it's so close to Asia. That Asian food is so good as now with Tidal Wave. Again, the tsunami follows through and... You're just going to have to see, will the battle for Sashimi continue as on holds his line alongside Elk. They've moved to mid. Both bottom laners are here as Cullen goes through onto Draw once again. And Elk feeling himself a bit here with the Storm Razors. But unable to find the kill once again. But at least he pushes out the bottom side. Yeah, exactly. All as well. I think too important blown, I guess, is the important thing, right? Just ultimates kind of traded uh, for now. And those will definitely be up by the time this next dragon comes up. And Bin, he's fine. Bit of a cheeky attempt from Aki. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we're kind of looking for now is the mandate finished up by On. As not really. 100 to 0. Damn! Okay, well. Wow, he's dead. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, dude, like, he's 0 4. Yeah, that's wait, not a. Wait, wait, don't dive this. Build. Hang on, BLG. They're oh, hoping no. for the center to heal up, but they still failed it again. Rookie oh. flashed away. Aki flashed away. Bin! Not gonna die. Rookie's damage was close, but. Dude, stop diving. The Aatrox is just not working. Man, dives just... Yeah. Not sad. NIP's best friend this game, to say the least. What I was getting to, though, as we take a step back. Dragon. Dragon's up. 40 seconds. Two items almost on the cards for Elk. He's not going to quite find it on this reset, unfortunately. But I feel like now BLG very much on spike. Everyone's on one item. Mandate's there for Elk. NIP, whilst they do have, you know, quite a few core items up and ready, I just feel like the strength of this composition is kind of going to be in about five minutes time. Once, to me, you start to see the peak of uh, the utility available both through Photic and Rookie to kind of buff up these bruises and work off that base damage. Uh, until then, though, BLG should, big emphasis on the should, have a lot of the agency to force plays and make plays work just because their champion should be just a touch stronger at this point in the game. I mean, also, 3k gold lead helps too, and the two-item Lucian also helps, but you're right. Like, this point of the game, the power spikes coming through are very adamant from BLG's side as Bin gets more gold for his team in that top lane. While Herald now spawns here for NIP, but this could be a bit of a risk with the charge coming forward. BLG still feeling themselves and feeling how strong they are. Even in a 3 versus 4, Tidal Wave is there. Counter-Strike comes through as well. They get poked down as Knight now joins in, and Herald doesn't find the opening mid. That means Dragon still up for contention here. NIP might have first move. But BLG won't be too far behind them. No, they won't. And I want to see... Once we swap back over, there's a one nice ward there, right where Duo is, right oh, above yeah. him, that Bin can maybe teleport to, but it's about to run out. Oh, no! It's controlled in the bottom river as well. They look for the engage. Glacial Prison there. Cullen comes out once again. Duo, the one to absorb a dragon stop for the time being. TB on top of Shun's head. It forces him to flash away as Knight has to zone out as well. Shanji comes in and he is chilling as Bin holds a flanking position with ulti available. Flash almost up in 10 seconds. That's three ultimates blown by BLG. A lot of their engage. Nice start. Uh, looking for Charm. Dwar. Gets a flash away from Dwar. Good damage though. Oh, Photic is front and gets eaten up. And now, as you said, Bin is just holding the line. He hasn't pulled the trigger yet. NIP are getting forced out. And BLG, there's good poke damage coming from Rookie, but it's not enough. Charm doesn't connect. Is it 3k? We hold this standoff in front of the third dragon. The center roll flies through. 1.5k. It still goes over NIP. Get soul pointers. BLG can't steal it away. And that's one thing they've got in this game. They've got time on their side. They've got a tool to play with and flex through this dragon stack. Really dangerous from NIP, though. You could see how powerful BLG are, not just because they're up 4k gold, which just kind of crept up on us, to be honest with you. But again, it's just about the spikes that they're on at the minute. It doesn't break out into a full blown fight. NIP can be really happy about that. They secure the dragon. Shouldn't. Aki were really dancing over trying to secure it. In the end, 
That Jax wins out. Triforce will attack the Empowered W as well. Let's see Bin stand powerful. here for 10 years. That, that'd be the TP because Bin didn't move, did he? No, he was just like wiggling back and forth, but you can't really blame him. He's looking for it. Teleport comes in. Nothing's actually able to lock him down. And, uh, shouldn't force the flash out, otherwise definitely would have been CC'd and likely killed. Bin? An IP. Yeah, it's all about like Bin's really looking and trying to find the angle. I think the big pain point for BLG is they don't have control oh. of that brush. As... Hello, hello. Rookie, Rookie has been caught out. Uh-oh. Well, what's up and available? 20 seconds to the Baron. Rookie has TP, but he's 33 seconds away from spawning. Jamada might be an opening here for BLG. I'm not sure how quick the Baron is, but at least try to lure NIP in for a little bit more. Maybe there's a possibility there. Yeah, I mean, historically, my rule of thumb has been AD carry needs to be on two items. But when your two items are Storm Razor Rapid Fire Cannon, I don't know if you can burst the 20-minute Baron <laughs> with this kind of composition. Uh, typically, that was when, you know, Kraken Slayer, I.E. or the? Kraken Slayer, big... Oh! Holy moly. Yeah, that's what happens if Photix by himself. If he doesn't have Tom Kench next to him, Elk will solo him. Yes. Yes, he will. So, uh, BLG very much in the control of this game right now. No doubt about it. NIP, again, it's about a few more minutes from now when the utility of their comp will kind of spike a bit harder. And that's really their window. And even then, it's not a big one to work with, Jake. I'll be honest with you. Uh, right now, BLG full mid control. Can move over to sides if they want to. Right now, though, their eyes are set on this tier one. Can they take it away? I mean, they're not doing enough damage. That's the other thing about the Lucian here, Jamada, is like this team, not the fastest turret taking machine either. So as they walk up, dude, Photic is just not given a chance. Draw has to have that R key on lock as he gets locked down. Never mind, because the Tom Kench is just going to die. Photic now knows having grace. R key the same. They're diving. This BLG have brought Ben in, and this time he ain't sitting and watching. The camera's been put away. Now he just chills and sips and hopes to find something on the side. Maybe a gin and tonic as Tarot goes down on the top side. Rookie at least finding something, but it is a Tarot trade. It's a kill trade as well. It's still the gold over to BLG as they're looking to take more for whatever quest in jungle. Yeah, exactly. Takeaway camp, start to starve and IP out, right? Really make this gold lead be felt as time goes on. BLG, I feel like they can just steer this one as long as they don't give over Soul. And even then, Soul will not really you know, be the end or be all, I think, for now. But what it will do, if NIP do manage to pick up this next dragon, is it will spawn Elder onto the map. I almost said Ender onto the map. Ender end uh, dragon. <laughs> it does want Ender dragon. And uh, that will certainly be a bit of a problem for a key. Dude, I'm up to all the result. Like, what other region have you seen a Lucian full gun it towards a Kama who's got a, a Nautilus on the other side of the wall? You know, Elk's got everything available. He's like, ah, I'd win. You know, it, that, that's what I love about not only Elk Solution, but a lot of the top tier LPL Lucians. They win through the 2v1, the 2v2. Like, they just full send it, and that's how they find advantage. Yeah, I know. I mean, to me, Elk, Ruler, Viper, they're, they're the Lucian gods. And they just know their limits so well. They know how much damage they'll output. They make it so hard for the enemy team, whoever their target is, also to just, like, answer them as well so we'll see how he continues to use the strength for this champion and ip though i feel like it's such a hard game to talk about because nip they don't really have reliable engage they don't really get to be first to a play ever because they don't have mid lane prior so life just kind of sucks to mm -hmm. be honest for now sure. and they kind of just have to soak up the pressure until blg potentially make a, a misstep and can actually be picked off now, Jamada, bad timing, but apparently I've gone under the ocean again. Props to that one chat who's just DMing me on Discord being like, see, <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'm getting. <laughs> and just telling me what's happening. Maybe I can cast like I'm in uh, The Little Mermaid. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, down here where the ocean's greener, Aki's jumping in. BLG with so many angles, Knight and Ben are coming in. Well, Elkanon jump on through. The charm does connect, but Draw does too. He flashes away and Shun runs in as Bin finally flies under the sea. Oh, NIP are under the sea. Where the dragons start, NIP run under the sea. I think Aki wants to jump in, but he can't, Jamada. I don't care if the mic's fixed anymore. I can't sing this whole fight out. Uh, it's too long right now. NIP, they're really on the back foot. You are my bloody goat, mate. Bin. 
Doesn't have World Ender anymore. But this is so precarious. If they can secure the soul, it feels great. But look at Knight. He's on the flank. Can he find a good oh, charm? He can't. Joe's gone. Up. Yes, he does, baby. Yes, he does. He opens up angling the soul away for free. Shanti runs in and everyone's good. Under the sea, Aki, where are you going? Just went in without anyone else's engaging. Now for the angle onto Shanji, onto Fodic. I mean, Knight has an angle just set on up. Dragon denied. And Fodic is going to die as well. I don't know what Mr. Krabs is called in that movie, but he would be proud watching this fight and watching VLG once again under the sea. What a beautiful, beautiful 60 seconds of League of Legends viewing experience. That was lovely. Thank you, Jake. I hope, I hope you. you can fix your mic. I don't know if it's still broken. But uh, that was probably the final nail in the coffin. That was probably GG. NIP. I think they're all gas. Played and simple. If they couldn't secure better. this and maybe make it some weird flip, then uh, it feels like now they're truly out of options. Drafted into a bit of a corner. Not only in draft, but just in game. BLG far too strong still on this spike. And even though the initial skirmish is really weird, you can see here, it's just the fact that they're kind of being attacked by Knight over the wall and from the side, whilst the rest of BLG's frontline kind of just slowly picks off the members that step too far forward from NIP. It's way, way too awkward for them to navigate. And yeah, BLG full on the drivers in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if they have Baron as we come out of the replay. They don't just yet, but I'm sure that'll be on the table very, very soon. All I can do is wish NIP good luck as oh, nice. it's been silent for a while no i i, I i'm just i am actually okay i'm just, just listening to you oh okay all right <laughs> I, Look, I think at this i think point, my mic i don't right. know i don't know you know I don't do know. i though i just have to you know what i have to do i have to just wait for that person to message me you know they just say <laughs> all they do is say c either they're from sea and they're just one of the gang or they're actually just saying you know the mic is <laughs> is struggling hey, i apologize I mean, ladies and gentlemen. i'm not sure why Rise up S uh, SEA guy. I'm sure it's True. like their time zone right now, you know. Has a. Uh, I don't been. He's got a turnaround. Oh, oh my is god. Indeed. Holy moly. <laughs> I mean, this is damage. I mean, PLG is so far ahead now, and it came all of a sudden. They deny the soul, and we just get fight after fight that's going in their favor. Culling to reach Fodic at the end as Knight now Spirit rushes in, ignoring Shanji at melee range, tries for the charm, but Fodic flashes away. Knight almost runs it under turret. In fact, yes, he does. Wait, Knight ran it. Also, Elf did as well. Shanti tries to bring it back. Shun almost dead oh, and whoa. should die, shouldn't he? Finn from over the wall just stands there <laughs> waiting. And on is going to look for an Aqua Prison. Fodic at least has the range. Finn getting close himself. BLG. Maybe they just don't care, bro. He's just staring at me menacingly. <laughs> Fodic says. Finn hops over the wall. Very, very easy. I mean, yeah, a bit of a oopsie moment from Knight. And Where isn't it insane replaced? that Renekton is 1 and 6 now, but just looked that threatening, even with this item combo? Which really does make you wonder how this game could have looked if some of those plays that NIP tried to force to actually press the issue and get the Renekton ahead uh, could have made these mid game team fights, right? How competitive they could have been. But unfortunately, so far, it wasn't the case. And we kind of ended up in this pretty game over scenario. For NIP Knight. Yeah, a little bit overzealous. The tower was still ramped, which is a little bit unfortunate. And yeah, again, look how strong Shanji kind of can be. I think a last second heal from on there is what also saves Shun, so well played. Yeah. On his part to ensure that he doesn't drop over to Fotik. Well, although I have to apologize for being a little bit scattered, ladies and gentlemen, in this game, um, as we round this one out, you know, BLG through bot, through mid. I mean, there's been a lot of whoopsies in this game that I think we need to kind of just summarize and say that for NIP, it feels like some plays put themselves in this position. There were some really good plays around bot side, quelling the combat thanks to Arky's jacks, but, um, you know, the dives on bin, the consistent giving of gold to this man's Aatrox has created a really serious problem as NIP played the defense for what could be the last time in this game. It's all leading up to BLG getting more stats thanks to the Baron, thanks to the Dragon, more importantly and putting the finishing touches on this game to lead them one step closer to that record of a score they set last split in 15 and 1. And the fact that they're doing it again, I mean, surely people are going to have favor for this team going into MSI. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, you said it right there at the very end, going into MSI, the expectation is they will simply make it, right? As the LPL stands. 
they have really, really upped their game from 2023. And of course, the addition of Knight trading Yagao for it just seems like an outright good trade deal. <laughs> Don't know what else to say. You're right. Uh, look, uh, more importantly, Jamato, I think I need to interject 10 seconds before Dragon. What is your favorite Disney film before we get into this? Do we have uh, time? Monsters, Inc. Oh, hell yeah. Dude. That's goaded. I would have accepted Tarzan as Elk. Look at him running forward. He just ran into five people. Culling does half the work. Tidal Wave follows the back line, and this is why I love LPL Lucians. They do stuff. They don't just sit on their bum and wait for the game to end. It's awesome to see as BLG have just taken two fell swoops at NIP. Arky's on a flank. He was trying for something, but that long, long play is now going to be sent backwards as well. And BLG have a Dragon to take. They have a Baron to take, and... Just like that, they should have a base afterwards to follow suit. Yeah, uh, honestly, I'm always surprised that this is a 30-minute game, given the, uh, the overall trend of it for the most recent, I don't know, almost 15 minutes, maybe 20. So there goes the dragon, just to ensure that NIP don't do some weird soul for Baron trade. And then eventually BLG will return to the map and likely just put all of their attention and focus on this Baron. And close out, so we can have more riveting conversations. Like, oh, well, what? Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah well, what? <laughs> what, what, what? It was just a weird time to cut into a, a you know, there was a face check going on there, but it's all good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> NIP, you just, you're dying. I thought, man, we're gonna no, have to I do this dying. solo. I wasn't dying. I was just like, interesting time to cut to a replay. That's all. But yeah, you could see NIP fully out of it. No, no gas in the tank. And yeah, like you're saying, more riveting conversations. Like, what is your favorite Disney movie, Jake? You've asked me. Uh, it's it's hard because again, like, no recent Disney movies are that good. Let's be real. Also, I'm it's top top. Calm, but yeah. What like Enchanto is okay. Is uh, hang on, we'll call this fight first because Draw just gets caught out again. He's not tanking up at the front line. Disengages the Shanji just TP it in, but that time Kench is already out of the fight and he doesn't have TP to reengage. So free Baron or free base entry, whatever BLG want. Um. I'll tell you and I'll think about it because Tarzan is an OG, but I think that's DreamWorks. So hang on. No, 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 I don't think it is. I think that's Disney. A animate, animated Disney, it has to be. Lion King and OG, yeah. for sure. Um, if Except Tarzan's a Disney movie, I think maybe Tarzan, but I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, no, for me, Monsters Inc., Toy Story, classic. Like, oh yeah. How yeah, can go wrong? Arky's just not being out in the parrot pit, by the way. Very rough. And oh, he's yeah. dead. Oh, the power. All right. Same. I feel like I've not seen Joe presses Arky in this game. I don't know if I'm just not paying attention. And it's not flack to Joe. I just feel like someone just dies far too quick next to him as. Oh, Bin. Could be. Oh! Oh, he's just taking on the world, dude. He doesn't care. He literally doesn't care. I mean, here's health, by the way, as well. But he can do the same. He cullings out Bin. Should be dying here, right? Where guys, guys, there? right? He took so long to die, and after what was already just an easy play, turned into a belcher for BLG. Hot damn. Did he kill Photic with Q2 and a profane hydro? Why did Photic <laughs> die like that? Riot! Riot! Oh my goodness me. Either way, BLG don't care. They're just gonna end the game. And the fact that he almost got away with his bloody life just makes it even worse. Blink and you'll miss it. I'm talking about Photic, not the game. The game was quite lengthy. BLG really playing with their food and... They... Oh my god. <laughs> oh. I Come mean, that's on. how you know. It, like, it, it was so over 10 minutes ago. Bin got fed the world. He is probably cheering. And BLG got smiles on their faces for a reason. That game was well fought from them. And I think a, a quite a meaty win. Yeah, definitely. And you really have to go back to the drawing board now if you're NIP. If you want to even be remotely, and I mean remotely competitive, you have to find a stronger draft than that, right? True. That game was, you know, even from just the, the pure jungle perspective, where do you play, right? Like, what side can you have a strong side? You could argue, like, realistically, it should have been top, and those dives weren't necessarily executed as well as they could have been. But even then, you have a strong Renekton into what, a super fed Lucian, uh, an Ari that's going to be constantly playing nuisance. You never, never really get to successfully dive because you've got to deal with Nami Wave and Bubble. Life just sucks. So, yeah, I think to me, trying to get Rookie a higher priority on a pick that isn't Karma 
really really valuable here i think uh, but blg just off rip i feel like had a read on yeah if rookie isn't on talia isn't on oriana life probably just feels great all right guys let's go to a break let's chill out i don't think we need to go through anything more than the fact that blg are good nip just a little bit less than good in this game but in game two i promise less of the mic issues less of the issues overall maybe we talk more about the game depending on how over it is but no promises mm -hmm. here as LPL's last series of the day comes right after this. Oh.